الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear respected brothers and sisters We are in this class studying together this concise surah that has a lot of tremendous meaning which is surah al-asr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. By al-asr. Al-asr is the time. Verily, man is in loss. Except those who believe in and do righteous good deeds and recommend each other to the truth and recommend one another to patience. The Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, because Allah Almighty swears by Al-Asr, the time, in the beginning of the surahs, so it is given that name. It is given that name. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, he swears by, for example, Wattini was Zaytun, by the fig, Wal-Layl, by the night, Wal-Shams, by the sun and the like due to their importance, due to their importance. The Sheikh said its relationship to what is before it. In the previous surah, we are told that preoccupation with worldly pursuits is a most objectionable way to live. Is a most objectionable way to live. In this surah, we are informed about those pursuits that we must preoccupy ourselves with faith in Allah, good deeds, advising one another to follow the truth, and advising one another to be patient upon the truth. For these pursuits reap good for both individual and society. So, if that's the case, my dear respected brothers and sisters, then we should focus on studying and learning and searching and acquiring knowledge as much as we are able especially the knowledge that has to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the knowledge about the names of Allah and his attributes the knowledge of the unity of lordship the unity of worship and then and then the knowledge of a salat and zakat and fast that's in the month of Ramadan and Hajj and other than that. So we strengthen our Iman and also we learn about the, the pillars, the six pillars of Iman and the five pillars of Islam and the like. Because knowledge breeds actions. So when you learn and then you know, you know, uh, the affairs of Iman, Tawheed, and you know, uh, the meaning of La ilaha illallah and uh, the pillars of La ilaha illallah and the conditions of La ilaha illallah and the nullifiers of La ilaha illallah it's not like someone who doesn't know anything and that's why the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in the hadith collected by the Imam Muslim rahimahullah ta'ala man mata wa huwa ya'lamu an la ilaha illallah dakhal al-jannah whoever dies while he knows so at the time when, uh, when he's going through the agony of death or she's going through the agony of death, this individual dies upon knowledge of La ilaha illallah. So he understands and she understands the meaning of La ilaha illallah, the pillars of La ilaha illallah, the conditions of La ilaha the reality of La ilaha illallah. Then, then what is the end result? Will enter al jannah Whoever dies while he knows or she knows that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, then this person will enter the Jannah. Shows you the importance of knowledge, the importance of Al Iman, Al Tawheed. So we should busy ourselves with learning. Because when we learn, we can teach others as well, we can teach our families. We can teach our colleagues at work. We can teach our companions, our friends, and the like. 
And also, not only we seek the knowledge, but we act upon it as well. We act upon what we know. We implement it. We implement it. And we advise one another. We advise one another to follow that truth, to follow it. Because this needs, you know, from us to advise one another. Because we're human beings. And we tend to forget. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الدِّكْرَةَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Give the reminder, because the reminder benefits the believers. So we should always remind one another, because we forget. And also, when you find that you are weak, then you strengthen your Iman. You study the books of Tawheed. Study Al-Usul Al-Talat, the three fundamental principles, with the explanation of one of the senior scholars. And, you know, understand, study it and understand it and teach it to others. You will find yourself that your Iman has increased because Tawheed increases the Iman. And sitting in circle of knowledge also increases the Iman. And being patient also, being patient. Because knowledge and actions, they need patience. They require patience. For example, going to the masjid for Salat al-Fajr, especially if Salat al-Fajr comes very early, it requires effort. So you have the endeavor. And in order for it to be easy upon you, you must love it. Because when you love knowledge, you learn. You love it because Allah loves it. So you love it. So when you love it, Allah makes it easy for you. Because you're sincere, you want to learn. The Shaykh said the virtue of this surah, At-Tabarani mentioned that Ubaidullah ibn Hafs said, when two men from the companions of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, would meet, they would not part from one another until one of them recited Surah Al-Asr until its end. Then they would give greetings of peace to one another after it. It was also recorded by Al-Bayhaqi from Abu Hudayfa al-Shafi'i said from Abu Hudayfa al-Shafi'i said if Allah had revealed only this, this Surah to his cre creatures. It would have been enough for them. He said that because in this surah, stages are mentioned, that if one completes all of those stages, he achieves his completion. The stages are as follows. As follows. The first one, to know the truth, to know it. Because how are you going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowing the truth? Because you can't just act like that. You have to learn. First of all, you have to know the truth. The second, to apply it in practice. To apply it in practice. The third, to teach it to one who does not know it. Or who is weak in his knowledge of it. Number four, to be patient regarding the preceding stages. Patience, patient, when you are learning the truth, patient when you are applying the truth, and patient when you are teaching the truth. All these, they require patience. They require patience. To strengthen your knowledge, you must have faith. And to strengthen your application, you must perform good deeds. Then you should be patient in your knowledge, your actions, and in your teachings. The surah, despite its brevity, is one of the most comprehensive surahs of the Quran. And all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The meaning of its word, wal-asr, means time. There are many lessons to be learned through the passing of time. 
the continual succession of day and night. Night and day, because that consistent pattern clearly indicates the Creator, glorious is He and Most High, and that He should be singled out for worship. So if that's the case, that He's the one that created us, He's the one that sustains us, He's the one that provides for us. He's the one that created time. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so many things happen in this time. You know? So we should reflect upon this creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. And this would increase us in Iman, right? And this, this also will be an incentive for us to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. Because if he's the creator and the sustainer and the provider, then he deserves to be worshipped. He deserves to be worshipped. The mushrikeen of Quraysh, they violated the unity of worship, even though they attested and they established the unity of lordship. They believed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that created them. As Allah said about them in the Quran, وَلَا إِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَهُمْ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ If you were to ask them who created them, they would surely say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they violated that. What they did, even though they know that Allah is their creator, they worshipped idols. They used these idols as intermediaries. اللات والعزة ومنات they use them as intermediary. So they violated the Tawheed. And this Tawheed is no, long, no longer Tawheed. No longer Tawheed. Because Shirk entered into it. So when you call upon other than Allah, you call upon Allah wal Uzza wa Manat. Same thing happens with the grave worshippers today. They call upon Sheikh Abdul Qadr al Jailani, Mu'in al Din al Jishti, Al Sayyid al Badawi, Al Sayyid al Zainab. So many shrines in different parts of the Muslim world where people who are very ignorant, instead of calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve their hardship, they call upon these occupants of the graves who cannot even hear them. They will not be able to respond to them. So it's like history repeats itself. This person, he prays with the Muslims and he fasts and he gives zakat and he performed hajj. But these actions, they will not benefit him. They will not benefit him because the foundation is what? is corrupt. If the foundation is corrupt, the subsidiaries are going to be corrupt. So the Salat is not going to benefit this person. So that's why it's very important for us, brothers and sisters, to concentrate on a Tawheed, to learn Tawheed, to learn Al-Iman, the five, pillar, the five pillars of Islam and then the six pillars of Iman. We learn these things because the five pillars of Islam has the first Tawheed. Islam is based upon five, five pillars. The first is the testification that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah. Then you learn about Salah, then, then you learn about Zakat, then you learn about fasting the month of Ramadan, then you learn about Hajj and the like. So all these things are very important for us to learn. The Shaykh Hafizahullah Ta'ala, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, they say that Al-Asr means the time in which the good and evil actions of man take place. In al-insana, man as species, all man, in al-insana. In al-insana. And the alif wal lam in the Arabic language either can mean that which is all comprehensive. Like when you say water. Al-ma. You say Al-ma water. Right? So this is general. It includes the rainwater, 
it includes the river water, the water from the well, and the like. So it's general. Likewise here, Al Insan, Alif Wallam, Al Insan. Man as a species, all mankind, all mankind. Man is in a state, in a state of loss since his life is his most valuable wealth. If he dies without believing and performing good deeds, he will have suffered the ultimate loss. This is the reason for the oath. Because if someone wasted his, his time in this life, he wasted his life. So he's going to regret. He's going to regret. And he will not be able to be returned back to this world. It's too late. That's it. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ This refers to those who have faith and do good deeds. For they are in profit, not loss. So basically, this world, you can use it as a vehicle for the hereafter. Yes, you can go about your job and things like that. And also, let your job, you know, be a halal job. Be a halal job. And also, the intention behind it is to feed your family. Halal. Right? So when you're doing that, you are pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're obeying Allah by working in a halal environment, in a halal job. I am sure there are challenges that we face when we go looking for jobs. But rest assured, when you give up something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give you better than that. So let's our life be a pro profitable life. Where we, we profit from it and benefit from it. And we use it as a vehicle to the hereafter. Let's all busy ourselves with that which will benefit us. Some people, they, 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 they busy themselves with that which will harm them. You know, chit-chatting and backbiting and, you know, and talking about this one and that one and the like. This is not going to benefit you. What's going to benefit you? When you learn Tawheed. You learn Tawheed. And you learn Al-Quran. You memorize the Quran and also you learn Tafsir al Quran. You memorize the Hadith, Tafsir of the Hadith, Al Fiqh. And other than that, from the beneficial sciences, Alhamdulillah, in this religion. The Sheikh said this is because they worked for the hereafter. They worked for the hereafter. So their main concern is to use this world as a vehicle to the hereafter. So they worked very hard here in this world for the next world. Because all of us, we're going to die. One day we're going to die. So what, how did we, what did we prepare to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we have enough provisions to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I am sure many of us will say no. So let's busy ourselves with, what, with that which will benefit us. The Sheikh said, and we're not preoccupied with worldly pursuits. So that's one of the characteristics of these, uh, the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made an exception of. Except those who believe. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ So this is an amal salih. This is a righteous deed. A lot of people... They're so involved in the worldly pursuits from the time they wake up until the time they go to sleep. All they care about is this world as if they were created only for this world. These people, they are heedless. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us. And heedlessness is a very dangerous disease. The Sheikh said, every male and female believer falls under this exception the wording is general and embraces all who have faith and do good deeds they advise one another 
to believe in the truth, to speak it and to apply it. That is faith in Allah alone and upholding what Allah legislated and staying away from what he forbade. This needs dedication, it needs love for this knowledge. Love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because to speak the truth sometimes is hard. Sometimes it's very hard to speak the truth. Because you have a lot of oppositions. But you know what matters is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what matters. You speak the truth and you apply it. You apply it because sometimes people they're going to oppose you with their cultural belief with their cultural uh, deeds and stuff like that you have to stand firm you stand your ground of course and you speak to them gently you tell them no this is not the way this is not what is in the Quran and the Sunnah this is culture this is your tradition and it clashes with with what is in the Kitab and the Sunnah of Prophet And you're going to find those who oppose you from even family members. Yes. Some of the family's members, you find that the parents are from the people of innovation. And their children, they are upon the Kitab was Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf. And there's always a clash. Because the parents, they want their children to follow their way whether they are Brilwis or they are Diubandis or they are upon Sufism or other than that. But you stand your ground. You don't change and you don't follow them. But gently you correct them. Yes, they are your parents. The origin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in the Quran to obey our parents and to be dutiful to them. But if they command us to do something haram or something that is an innovation, then we don't obey them. Because the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the Hadith, لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق There is no obedience to any one of the creation. When it comes to disobeying Allah the most gracious, when it comes to disobeying Allah the Creator, there is no obedience to anyone. وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ And those who advise one another to be patient upon their belief of the truth, upon true speech, and upon their application of the truth. Patience is strength in the soul that calls one to bear hardship, yet to continue to work. There are many forms of patience. One must be patient in staying away from sins because that requires patience. You have to go against your desires. And remember that the human soul is like a bottle. If nothing fills it up, air will fill it up. If you don't occupy it with good, it will, it will occupy you with evil. Patience in performing obligatory deeds, and this also requires patience, to perform the daily salawat on time, right? We all get lazy sometimes, right? So we have to have patience. Patience. You know what would help you? To love it. You know that Allah commands you to do it. And you know if you were to do it, you're pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, your patience, patience will become strong. Patient one one is faced with vestitudes of life. Those decrees that we find it painful to bear. Like for, for example, you lose a loved one. You lose, you lose your mom, you lose your dad, you lose your husband, you lose your sister, you lose your brother. This is very painful. It's something that Allah decreed. 
there is wisdom behind it we don't know about it Allah knows about it but we should face it with patience these calamities that befall us a decree from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we face them with patience and we don't become displeased with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his names is an hakim the, the all wise so he is the all wise in his legislation subhanahu wa ta'ala when he legislates for his servants he's the all wise when he decrees for his servant also he is the all wise subhanahu wa ta'ala the sheikh said that we are supposed to advise one another to patience after having been ordered to advise one another to the truth indicates the superiority of patience and the great reward waiting for those who are patient. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah sabirin Truly Allah is with the patient ones. So this is a great honor for those who are patient. The meaning in summary, Allah Almighty swears in this chapter by the time and Allah Almighty may swear by anything from his creation according to his will all others however may swear only by Allah alone so when we swear we swear only by Allah we say we say wallahi or billahi or tallahi all these are okay you can say wallahi billahi tallahi but we don't swear by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't do that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator he's the one that created the time he's, he's the one that created the sun he's the one that created the light and he's the one that created the everything the the heavens the earth the day and the night and everything طيب. the sheikh he said here Allah Almighty swear by the time that every human being is in a state of loss except for those who believe and do good deeds the first stage includes those who know the truth and believe in it the second stage those who do good deeds because of the truth they have believed in the third stage includes those who advise one another to do good and teach one another about the truth the final stage inclu includes those who advise one another to be patient and steadfast upon the truth at the end of this stage one achieves completeness for completeness means for one to not only be complete alone but also to help make others complete one can achieve that by strengthening his knowledge and ability of his application by having faith and by performing good deeds then he completes others by teaching them and by advising them to have patience upon knowledge and a good deeds the surah despite its brevity is one of the most comprehensive surahs of the quran and all praise is due to allah the sheikh he mentioned what can be derived from this verse number one in only three verses surat al-asr explains the way to salvation allahu akbar al-imam al-shafi'i said if allah had revealed only this surah to his creatures it would have been enough for them it would have been enough for them because the tools of salvation are mentioned in this surah number two we are informed of the end of for the disbelievers complete and utter loss number three we are informed of the ultimate success awaiting those who believe and do good deeds those who stay away from shirk and disobedience number four it is compulsory to advise one another to follow the truth and to be patient 
Number five, here Allah Almighty swore by the time. For in the passing of time, things change constantly. A reality from which we can learn many lessons. Other general benefits. When we are informed that we must advise one another and cooperate with one another to promote the truth, to promote truth, good deeds, and patience, we learn that the life of the believer should be a life in which one patiently establishes the truth. Despite the hardship, he may suffer while working for the benefit of Islam and his nation. Number two, one of the best of deeds is to repent from sins. So always make istighfar because we're human beings. We're going to commit sins. And the Prophet said in the hadith, all of the children of Adam, male and female, they err, they commit sins. And the best of those who err and commit sins are those who repent. You always busy yourself with repentance. Seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dua Yunus, la ilaha illa ant, subhanak inni kuntu min al -dhalimin. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in the hadith, وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُوهَا And when you commit a sin, follow it up with a good one. It will wipe it off. Number three, and recommend one another to the truth and recommend one another to patience. In regard to this verse, Al-Razi, Imam Al-Razi, Fakhr al-Din Al-Razi said, this verse indicates that the truth is heavy and that hardships necessarily accompany it. And that's why when you look at the history of the prophets والسلام, and their nations, look at the first messenger that was sent to the people. Nuh, peace be upon him. He called his people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He called them to Tawheed, to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship for 950 years. How many followers did he have? And Allah said about him in the Quran, وَمَا آمَنَ مَعَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ Only a few believed with him. A few. The Mufassirin, they vary. Some of them, they say 18. Some of them say a little bit more than that. But even if they were more than that, it's still a little in, 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 com in comparison with the, with the majority. So the truth is heavy. It's very heavy. Only those who have pure hearts, those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided because they desire the truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in the Quran, وَمَا أَكْتَرُ النَّاسِ وَلَوْ حَرَسْتَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ In Surah Yusuf, وَمَا أَكْتَرُ النَّاسِ وَلَوْ حَرَسْتَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ That the, the, the majority of the people, even if you are, if you desire it, they are not believers. Even if you desire it, they will not be believers. So the truth is very heavy. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَإِن تُطِعْ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ If you were to obey the majority of the people on the earth, they will mislead you away. They will, if you were to obey the majority of the people on the earth, they will mislead you away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they follow their desires. They don't want to hear it. The truth is heavy. Only those that have pure hearts, those that Allah guided, those are the ones that will take it and implement it. The Sheikh said, One of the best deeds is to repent from sins. Number three, and recommend one another to the truth. And recommend one another the patience. In regard to this verse, Ar Razi said, This verse indicates that the truth is heavy. I wanted to repeat it again to tell you that the path is not paved with roses. We have to have patience. It takes patience, steadfastness. It takes dedication. It takes love. You have to perfect your love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The love to the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said لا يؤمن واحدكم حتى يكون الله ورسوله أحب إليه مما سواهما None of you shall truly believe will not perfect his iman or her iman until Allah and his messenger become dearer to him than anything else. So this necessitate that you have patience. The Sheikh said, Razi said, this verse indicates that the truth is heavy and that hardship necessarily accompany it. That that is why recommending one another about patience is mentioned directly after it. Is mentioned directly after it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all Al Ilm al Nafi' wal Amal Salih. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim.